Let us join together in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Lauren Isley was a scientist on vacation walking the beaches of Costabel, witnessing what the ocean spit out upon the sandy shores during the night. Watching the natural selection process at work, he coolly mused to himself, in the end, the sea rejects its offspring. He saw shells with their tiny animals inside. He saw a small octopus dying on the sand, and he saw thousands of starfish, which the stormy waters had washed ashore. It was the hour before dawn as he walked, and he saw another kind of death at work, flashlights of professional shellers greedily grabbing the starfish from the sand and stuffing them half alive into their bags. There were bags and bags filled with dying starfish. It was painful to behold. Then he walked around a bluff, and he saw the rising sun lifting its rim of light upon the stormy sky ahead, and there before him arced a gigantic rainbow which had sprung shimmering into existence. There, standing beneath the rainbow, just within its color of light, was a moving human figure. He could barely make it out from this distance. The figure was looking down and then bending down. It cradled something in its hands, stood tall, and flung the object far out into the breaking surf. As Isley drew near, he saw this was a man and who was reaching down and standing again and flinging the object again and again. It was the starfish that the man was throwing. Now he was beside the man. It's still alive, he asked. Yes, said the man. And he took the star and spun it far into the air and then into the sea. It may survive if the offshore pool is strong enough, said the man. Are you a collector? Lauren asked. The man smiled as he stooped and rose and flung again. Only for the living, he said. The stars thrown well, one can help them. Without other words being exchanged, Isley turned and walked on. As he walked, he thought, the star thrower is mad, and his particular acts are a folly with which I have not chosen to associate myself. I am an observer. I'm a scientist. Nevertheless, I just saw the rainbow attempting to attach itself to the earth. When he reached a bend in the shoreline, he turned, looking back. He saw the man again toss yet another star. And then he wrote in his famous essay, The Star Thrower, for a moment in the changing light, the sower of stars appeared magnified as though casting larger stars upon some greater sea. He had the posture of a god. No, he is a man. The star thrower is a man, and death is just running more fleeting along every sea beach in the world. As he walked along the beach, Isley pondered Darwin and nature's law of tooth and claw, where death is some sad rule in progress. And then he pondered Carl Jung and the inner struggle between darkness and light in each human soul. He thought that he had witnessed the immense universe at work in the cycle of death and resurrection. And then he pondered the biblical injunction, love not the world, neither the things of this world. But then he began to think about this world and he was filled with love. He said to himself, I do love this world. I love its small ones, the things beaten into the strangling surf, the birds singing, which flies and 
falls and is not seen or heard from again. I love the lost ones, the failures of this world. And with that, he pivoted, he turned, and he moved down the beach quickly back to the star thrower. As he reached the man with the stars in his hand on this rainbow swept corner of the world, he picked up a still living star and spun it high into the waves. All he said to the man was, call me another thrower. And then he thought to himself, this man is no longer alone. Now there are two and there will be others. With no more words spoken, the two stood side by side, dancers stooping and lifting and flinging, stooping and lifting and flinging, stooping and lifting and flinging. And Lauren continued, I picked up and flung another star, perhaps for outward to the rim of space, the genuine star was similarly sized and seized and flung. I could feel the movement in my body. It was like sewing, the sewing of life on an infinitely gigantic scale. I looked back across my shoulder, small and dark against the receding rainbow. The star thrower stooped and flung once more but I never looked again. The task we had assumed was too immense for gazing. I flung and I flung again, while all about us roared the insatiable waters of death. After some time, he walked on. He looked back and he saw for one last moment, the star thrower against the rising sun and the receding rainbow and then he caught the dance of life against the world, picked up a star like a fool in love with the world, cast it as though he and that man were casting stars on some, some infinite beach beside the unknown hurler of all suns. And with that, the essay ends. So it is with God the hurler of all sons. God stoops and lifts, spins and flings the universe into being, and then into our history of tooth and claw, of light and dark, an endless human struggle, God births a star thrower. His name is Jesus from the town of Nazareth. God burst this star-born man in a tiny town in an occupied territory in the greatest empire known to history. At first glance, we think him a fool, standing against the tides of empire, of violence, of cruel humanity. But watching him work methodically, we witness him a love for the world, we see it in him. He does love this world, he loves the small ones, from the starfish to the birds that sing and fly and fall. He loves every creature, great and small, every child of God, every star of God washed upon the shores of life. He stoops, he lifts, he flings, live, he cries with every encounter. He steps into the waters of the Jordan River and he asks John to be baptized. And the great hurler of sons, his very own father, leans down and says with love, you are my beloved son. And out of the waters and into his mission and ministry, he steps soaking wet. He lifts and touches, heals and teaches. He proclaims good news to the poor, release to the captive, sight to the blind, liberty to those who are oppressed, and hope for everyone who hurts. Live, he says to you, to me. To the evil within a man demon-possessed, he says, come out of him, Satan. Then to the Satan-free man, he says, live. To a woman caught in adultery, he says, I don't judge you. Then he says, go and sin no more, go and live. To the fishermen who cast their nets into empty places in the sea, he redirects their efforts against their protests and their nets filled to overflowing. And he says, don't be afraid of miracles. 
God is at work here. Come with me. Catch women and men and sow life and live. He touches an untouchable man, a so-called leper, and says, if you want to be clean, you can be clean. And the man responds, I want to be clean. And Jesus says, it is done. Now live. Four men bring their severely disabled friend on a pallet to Jesus and drop him through a roof. And Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. Pick up your pallet and walk, go and live. And the man walks out the front door, pallet in hand. To the tax collector who is busy on the beaches of Galilee collecting and coveting starfish, he says, make another choice. Be just. Live. To the hypocritical scribes and Pharisees who are busy trying to manage the beaches and administer self-absorbed beach rules, it's their specialty after all. He says, don't be so wrapped up in beach management when your precious creatures are dying on the sand. I know it's against the law to cast starfish into the surf, but do it and live. Then he invites 12 to be star throwers as well with him. He shows them how to sow life. He says, love your enemy, for God is kind to the ungrateful and selfish. He says, be merciful to all as God is merciful to you. He says, judge not that you will not be judged. Forgive and you will be forgiven. And while you're at it, live. He is killed for flinging starfish and sowing life. But the life force who has created him is greater than death. And his father, the hurler of sons, the creator of the immense universe, picks up his beloved son, the one whom he richly blessed, though he is broken and breathless. He carries him from the star-throwing struggle. He carries him in the palm of his hand and gently flings him from death to life, back into the surf, back into the waves, and he is risen. But the story doesn't end there. By his example and because he carefully taught others to be star throwers while he is still with them, they too become star throwers. Throughout time they speak his words, live, they raise the dead, they heal the brokenhearted, they release the prisoners, they bring justice to the oppressed, they bind up the wounds of warriors in this life across the beaches of time. Under the rainbow of promise, still alive among the nations, the star throwers of this world stand as a witness as the surf crashes to the beach. They stoop down, they lift up high, they fling far, casting hope and life out into the surf. So was he a fool? Was he a Don Quixote type of chaser of windmills, this star thrower of ours? Was this man spinning stars back to life just one single solitary sower against too much death? Was his life wasted? Or was he God's new creation? Was he God's eternal amen, who is able to wipe away every tear from our eyes? I cannot answer for you. I can only answer for myself. All I know is this. He has knelt down by me. He has picked me up from the crashing tides he has placed me in the palm of his hand. He has stood with me there in his hands, and he has flung me back into the surf and said, Timothy, live. And there, in the water of life, in the living waters of baptism, I have found others whom he cast into the sea of love with me. They are from every nation. They are from every tongue. They are from every faith. They are every color, every gender, every sexual identity of human creation. 
They are the smallest and the most fragile. And they are the largest and the ones we believed were the strongest and most well healed, but were wounded just like the rest of us. And to each he spoke the same words, live, and he called them by name. The star thrower of Nazareth is still stooping, still lifting, still flinging life into being. He is still alive among the nations. He is still calling us, even now, to the edge of the water, to the table of grace, and to the reconciling of each of our differences between each other, all people, and all creation. We are all richly blessed. So let's live.